हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वी आर डिस्कसिंग द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ टोटल क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट दिस इज प्रोफेसर आशीष टी पाटिल फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग के आई टीज कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग ऑटोनोमस इन यूनिट वन दैट इज बेसिक कंसेप्ट एंड क्वालिटी गुरुज लास्ट टाइम वी हैव सीन द कंसेप्ट ऑफ टोटल क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट टूडे वील डिस्कस द कंसेप्ट ऑफ टी क्यू एम फ्रेमवर्क एंड various costs associated with quality so you can see here a tqm framework now tqm framework comprises of gurus then tools and techniques principles and practices and ultimately the approaches and the measures so various gurus like shevard deming juran crosby ishikawa they have developed various tools and techniques and these tools and techniques are used as fundamental base for implementing the total quality management now various tools and techniques are like benchmarking then use of information technology quality management systems like iso 9000 environmental management systems quality function deployment quality by design then fmea that is failure mode and effect analysis then product and service liability total productive maintenance then various management tools like kaizen six sigma and statistical process control so there are various tools and techniques which are developed by these quality gurus which are taken as fundamental base for implementing the concept of total quality management in any organization now various principles and practices which tqm takes into account are the people and the relationship among all the people then the concept of leadership customer satisfaction nowadays people are talking about customer delight so customer should not be only satisfied rather you should have the customer delight then only you will have repeat order from customer then the employee involvement that is your employee should be involved at all the stages of implementing the total quality management then concept of supplier partnership that is treating your suppliers like a partner and ultimately it's the end user that is customer to whom you should focus every time so the approaches you should have is your organization should be in a continuous stage of process improvement and at all levels of your work you should have or you should implement the performance measures so this is the overall framework of total quality management now what are the benefits you get from tqm when you implement tqm various customer satisfaction oriented benefits you will receive are you will be having the improvement in your product quality you will be having the improvement in your product quality then improvement in your product design improvement in production flow improvement in employee moral and quality consciousness because here employee will be taking quality as their first duty okay so therefore as employees are involved at all stages so that they should have the quality consciousness so their moral will also be encourage every time and because of that best of the products or best of the services will be produced then there will be improvement in your product service also and because of all these improvements you will produce better and better products or services and because of which the ultimate benefit you will get is the marketplace acceptance the customer will definitely accept your product or service if they stand in better quality position 
then the economic improvement oriented benefits what you get are there are reduction in operating costs then the operating losses will also get reduced and because of this the service requirements will be reduced and which will ultimately reduce the field service cost also so these are some of the benefits you will get if you implement total quality management in your organization now let us discuss about cost of quality now the quality always comes with some of the cost and we are discussing today the concept of cost of quality so what is the definition of cost of quality now quality costs are those costs associated with the non achievement of product or service quality as defined by the requirements established by the organization so your product or service will be having some of the quality so if these quality attributes are not achieved as said by the organization then you can say that there will be some of the quality related costs so in a layman's language you can say that quality cost is the cost of poor products or poor services now the example of quality cost we can say that retesting computer chip that was tested incorrectly now if you have tested some computer chip in the production phase and at later stage you realize that it's a faulty and you decided that you should check it again now checking it again will introduce some cost because you have to involve some people you have to involve some instruments so therefore retesting computer chip that was tested incorrectly will arise some of the cost and these costs are nothing but cost of quality now what are the elements of quality cost now american society for quality control that is asqc has divided quality cost into four categories the first one is cost of prevention next is cost of appraisal the third cost is cost of internal failure and the final cost is cost of external failure let us discuss these costs one by one now the first cost is cost of prevention so these prevention costs are related to efforts to prevent failure so to avoid the failure whatever cost are associated these are nothing but cost of prevention so for example you can take the cost of quality planning here you are planning something so that you should achieve the best of the quality so all those planning related cost are nothing but cost of quality planning then you need to document whatever quality attributes you are getting so you need to document all those quality aspects so whatever cost associated with that documentation is cost of documenting sometimes you need some training to your employees so that the quality should be at par so cost associated with it is cost of training cost associated with preventing recurring defects sometimes some defects are recurring again and again so you need to avoid these defects and for that purpose if you take some preventing measures then the cost associated with those measures are the cost of preventing recurring defects then cost of investigation analysis and correction of causes of defects that is also one of the cost so these are various kinds of costs of prevention next one is cost of appraisal now appraisal cost associated with measuring evaluating or auditing products or service 
to ensure that they conform to specifications or requirements. So, your products or service should be conform to their specifications and requirements. So, whatever efforts like measuring, evaluating or auditing these products or services you take, then they must be having some cost and these costs are cost of appraisal. So, what it includes? Now, the first one is cost of receiving test and inspection, then the cost of laboratory acceptance testing where you accept the product or service and or you can check in laboratory what exactly the quality of your product, then it is the cost of laboratory acceptance testing. Next cost is cost of installation and commissioning. Sometimes you need to install and commission some of the equipments to check the quality aspects. So, such cost is cost of installation and commissioning. Then cost of analysis of reporting of tests and inspection results. You need to report your test and inspection results to various interested parties. Now, obviously it will arise some cost. So, this cost is nothing but cost of analysis of reporting tests and inspection results. Cost of vendor rejects. Sometimes vendor sends us the products and you will test the products and you will find that some of those products are rejected. Now, you need to report those product failures to your vendors. You need to settle down those rejections and again you need to bring the corrected products in your premises from vendor. So, all these things will arise some cost and these costs are nothing but cost of vendor rejects. Next cost is cost of internal failure. So, the costs which are linked to correct the mistakes before delivery of the products are called as cost of internal failure. So, examples of this cost of internal failure are cost associated with scrap and rejects. You need to segregate the scrap items, you need to reject the items for which some of the cost will arise. So, these costs are cost associated with scrap and rejects. Then cost of repair and rework, some components which can be used after repair and rework, you need to repair them and you can use them further. So, whatever cost arise that is cost of repair and rework. Then cost of design changes, sometimes the product design is changed and because of that you need to change the fixtures or jigs related to production and accordingly you need to change the equipments also to check their quality. So, whatever cost associated with that is cost of design changes. Then cost of troubleshooting or defect failure analysis, sometimes you have to analyze those failures of the products. So, that cost is nothing but cost of troubleshooting. Then cost of re-inspection and retesting, sometimes you need to re-inspect the products or retest the products. So, whatever cost associated with that, that can be treated as cost of re-inspection and retesting. Sometimes you need to give some sales discounts for inferior products. So, if your product are having some inferiority, then you can give some discount. For example, if it is priced at 100 rupees, you will sell it at say 80 rupees. So, 20 percent discount you will give. Now, that 20 percent is nothing but loss of that particular product price. So, therefore, that 20 percent sale discount you can consider as cost of sales discount because of the inferiority of that product. Next cost is cost of external failure. Now, external failure cost arise from the rejection of products and service by the customer due to poor quality. Now, when you sell your product, at some stages customer will realize that the product is of poor quality or whatever service you have provided, customer may feel that the service is poor and because of that, customer may complain and to settle down those complaints, you need to have some processes and which will arise some costs and these costs are the cost of 
external failure. The first such cost is cost of commissioning failures, then cost of servicing or replacing the defective item. Sometimes you need to replace the defective item. So, whatever cost arises is cost of servicing or replacing the defective item. Then cost of processing complaints from customers. You need to process some complaints if customer complains about your product or service. So, such cost arise can be categorized under cost of processing complaints from customers. Then cost of guarantee and warranty claims. Customer may claim if there are some guarantees or warranties if you have provided at the time of sale, then if customer is dissatisfied on the performance of the product, then they may claim about their guarantee or warranty. So, such costs are cost of guarantee and warranty. Then cost of lost goodwill of customer. Sometimes your product gets failed and because of which you will lose your goodwill in customer. So, again to raise that goodwill you need to put some extra efforts so that customer will again get attracted towards your products or services. So, whatever cost arise for such things can be considered as cost of lost goodwill of customer. Let us stop your video for a while and you can try to give the answer of this multiple choice question. So, cost of installation and commissioning comes under dash. So, answers are cost of prevention, cost of appraisal, cost of internal failure and cost of external failure. I hope you have tried to answer this question. Now, with this, we will stop today's session. In next session, we will try to see the contribution from various quality gurus. Thank you.